three. Hello, we're gonna do a quick uh, instructional video on how to uh, use your biz and what it's for. Uh, these are the different parts. This is the biz module. And this is the cable and the interface. And this is the packet of leads that you use with the biz. You might wanna get closer so they can hear me. Okay, so I'm gonna go over it, but if you need a reminder, all the instruction on how to place the leads is right here behind the packet. And um, so Megan is gonna be our subject today. You can go ahead and lay back. And so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take some soapy, uh, soapy rag and you're gonna wash the forehead with soapy water and make sure that you dry it really good, okay? Get closer so you can hear me because the, they might not be able to hear me. Okay, then you're gonna take some alcohol wipes and I don't have any alcohol wipes, but you're gonna uh, wipe with alcohol the entire skin, okay? And you're gonna let that dry. Once that is dry, then you're gonna open your packet of leaves. You see this little piece right here? You won't have to open it here because if you open it here, you're gonna rip it in half. So make sure that you open it from the end. You're gonna take it out and it looks like this. It says one, two, four, three. And again, the packet is gonna tell you if you forget what I'm about to tell you where they go. You're gonna pull them off of here and they have a little bit of gel behind each lead. Now, the number one has arrows. Those arrows have to go straight down midline. So when you put this first one on, that's gonna line up with uh, the patient's midline and it should be about two inches above the uh, bridge of the nose, number one. So about here, and now you see how the arrow's pointing straight down, and uh, it's about two inches above the bridge of the nose. So you're gonna put that one there, and when you do that, four needs to be above the eyebrow, anywhere above the eyebrow. It doesn't have to be in the middle of the eyebrow. And then three, you can move around because three is gonna go on the temple. And that's her temple right there. So I'm gonna put that on her temple. Now, after you do that, you're going to push around, around the lead, not in the center, around the lead. You don't wanna push in the center because the gel will make it so that the lead cannot stick to the patient. Once it's secure around, then you're gonna push for five seconds on each dot. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now this is ready, okay? You guys want some time? Now you're gonna, now you're going to connect the interface, okay? This piece right here. And uh, you should not have these little gadgets because I'm gonna throw them all away because they're infections control problem. And so this piece connects to the leads and it only goes one way. If you can see that, it's got a, a certain shape and it only goes one way and it's like this and it clicks in and you're done, okay? This is gonna be draped around the top and you're going to clip this module somewhere safely on the bed so it doesn't fall because these are very expensive modules. And now you're gonna have the cable. So the module is gonna go in one of the slots for the monitor. You wanna come around? Yeah, I will. And I know that some of you think that this is storage, but it's not storage, okay? That's what this is for, is for the <laughs> modules. So you're gonna fit one of the modules in there. It slides right in. Make sure it clicks and you're ready. You're gonna take the connector, which only can go in one way. It has a little ridge, and that pushes, pushes up, click it in, and you're good. Now, if you see the monitor, it has not populated on the monitor. If the monitor has had biz in the past, it should populate. But if it doesn't, which most of them don't, you're gonna go right here to monitor setup, and you're gonna go to parameter setup, and there's your biz. Now, if you wanna go easier to there, you're gonna go right here on the module to the little paper sign, push that, and it automatically opens the biz parameter setup. Now, these parameters are already set. You do not have to change them. 
and you do not want to turn on your alarms. This is not uh, uh, something that you need to be warned of. This is something you're going to check periodically. So don't set your alarms. You're just going to have more beeping for no reason. So now it's still not populating. So now what are you going to do? You're going to go to monitor setup, screen setup, and you're going to go all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, almost to the bottom. And there it is, biz. You're going to click on show parameter and show with waveform. And now it's right here. Now notice that it's not, it's not giving me five green dots and that's because we didn't wash her head or use alcohol. And there it is. Now they came on. I just, the came three on. is kind of coming on and off because she's a little bit greasy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Megan. Okay. Right Sorry, there. I'm pushing you a little bit. Okay. There you got it. Now, okay. now we're getting a waveform and we're going to get a reading in just a second. Okay. Uh, if, by the way, if you have a lot of things populated, like a center line, a CVP, uh, temperature, all of that, you might not have enough room. You might have to take one of the other ones out uh, for this to show up. Uh, if you can see, if there's a lot of activity, you are not going to see those waveforms on the patients that we're going to use this. This is only for paralyzed patients. Okay, not for any patient that is not on a paralytic, only for paralyzed patients. And this number right here is your, uh, your uh, measurement. 100 means that the patient is fully awake. Zero means that the patient is dead. So our goal for these patients on paralytics is between 60 and 40. Anywhere between 60 and 40, you will not make any changes to sedation. None. So that is your goal. Even if it's 59, even if it's 41, you're gonna leave it alone. It means you're where you need to be. Now, let's say that she's at 97 and she's paralyzed. That means that she is fully awake and she knows that we're saying things about her being fat, okay? <laughs> so you make sure that if you're at above 60, that you are going to up that sedation. Not, I'm, I didn't say Megan's fat. I'm just saying in general, our patients. So uh, make sure that if you're above 60, you're gonna titrate your sedation up. You should always start with your narcotics. Always fentanyl first. Once you've uh, used a lot of fentanyl and, and you wanna go into a benzo, then you will titrate your benzos up. Same thing if they're over sedated. If your patient is at, a, let's say at 30, the first thing you're going to take off is your benzos. So you're going to decrease your Versed. Even if your fentanyl is maxed out, don't touch your fentanyl. We want patients not to be on benzos if possible. So if you can shut your benzo off first and then start titrating that on your narcotic, then you do that. Now, how often are you going to do that? I don't want you in your room every five minutes and trying to micromanage your biz numbers. So you're going to monitor this every two hours. That means that you will not make titrations to sedation more often than every two hours on paralyzed patients. You make your titration up or down and you wait two hours. Even if they fall out of range in the middle of the two hours, or even if they go in range in the middle of the two hours, you're not gonna touch your sedation again. Only every two hours are you gonna come assess, look at your number, titrate up or down. And again, do not touch your sedation if you're within the range. Now, uh, let's say that you have a patient who has uh, a number of 10 and there's like basically no waveform on there and you've weaned off all the paralytic, I mean all the sedation and the patient's still not doing anything. You probably should notify the doctor because that patient's probably brain dead and they might need other tests to see if, you know, if there's any actual activity. This measures EEG waves, uh, but it does not diagnose so it doesn't know if the patient is seizing or if there's any abnormalities. It only knows basically the wave height and the intensity of the wave, not the frequency of the waves. Let's say that you don't have a biz monitor and you want to, and you still have to titrate on your patient because we have 10 of these, but we've had more than 10 people in paralytics. The new order for assessing sedation and paralyzed patients will tell you what you have to do. And I'm gonna tell you now. Example number one, 
If you walk into your room and you open your door, and as soon as you come in the room, the patient's vital signs go up, their heart rate goes up, their blood pressure goes up, that patient is awake. You need to give more sedation. If you come in the room and uh, the vital signs are always abnormal and you don't have anything to blame it on, there's no uh, new infection, the patient was normal before and all of a sudden it's up and it doesn't go down, uh, you know, they don't have a fever, that patient is also not sedated and you're gonna titrate up. If you make a few titrations and the vital signs stay up and you feel, no, you know what, this patient has done a lot of things, then maybe there's something underlying that's going on that we don't know about causing the abnormal vitals. But we are gonna go by the vital signs when you're not using this. Like I said in a video previously, if you have somebody on sedation, on paralytics, and you don't have a BIS monitor, you do not ever for any reason take away sedation. Please don't take sedation. I still have multiple patients this week, after we discussed this last week, that sedation was turned down on patients that were paralyzed. You do not have a need to do that. It's okay for them to be over sedated. Every single patient that we hooked up yesterday was right around 42, 45. One patient was a little bit too much, like around 32. Uh, everybody else was right where they needed to be. So please don't turn off sedation or wean down sedation on paralyzed patients unless you have a biz monitor telling you that you have to do that. Um, one more thing that people have asked, okay? This does not take away the need for train of four. Train of four is to assess the level of paralytics on a patient. This is to assess the level of sedation on a patient. So you're still gonna do your train of four. However, um, the reason you do train of four is not to assess how paralyzed the patient is necessarily. Yes, it tells you that a little bit, but the reason you do train of four is so that we don't give too much paralytics to a patient and cause nerve damage. So if you have somebody on a zero to zero of a train of four, that patient is a risk for having permanent nerve damage from the paralytics. Nimbex is very forgiving. It's not like Vecuronium and Rock. Vecuronium and Rock are very dangerous at those levels. Nimbex, it's a little more forgiving. So if you have a patient on Nimbex and you have uh, a, two, a two out of three or a three out of four, I'm sorry, a two out of four or three out of four, you don't have to, like the order says, check that every single hour. If you've been constantly checking and the patient is stable at those ticks, you're not gonna touch the Nimbex. Do not micromanage your Nimbex drips. We're changing the order. We're gonna make it so that it's every four hour assessments on paralytics, uh, but I'm okay until we get the order fixed that you just do what's best practice, which is not to micromanage these drips, okay? Um, you still have to have train of four because we wanna make sure they don't have zero, but you don't have to check it every hour once you once you reach a certain level. The other thing that's wrong with the order is that it tells you that if you have four, four ticks, you have to increase your drip. That is not true. If the patient has reached bent synchrony and you have a right level of paralytics and sedation, even at a four of four, you don't have to increase your paralytics. If the patient has been synchrony, you don't touch the Nimbex. You don't touch the paralytics. Um, and I'll, I'll put out some uh, written communication of everything we talked about in the video. And if you have any questions or comments, please make sure that you ask. Um, we'll make this video available not just on Facebook, but we'll, we'll uh, maybe send a link uh, through an email so that you can all see it. Uh, and uh, again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Do you can you think of anything, Megan, that we missed? I think that you hit everything. Hit everything. Okay. Thank you, Megan, for. Uh, and sorry that I maybe called you fat. I didn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you.